what is a graph? Now, you may know certain types of graphs, such as an example like where we have an x-axis and a y-axis and then we draw some function and we call that a graph. Or maybe you've seen graphs that where you have some sort of a bar chart and that's also a graph. But when we talk about graph theory, we don't mean these things. We don't mean graphs on the xy plane and we don't mean bar charts. We mean something very specific when we talk about graph theory. And if you saw the previous video where we discussed the problem of the bridges of Konigsberg, then you'll have a vague sense of what I mean. It's not something like this, it's something that involves some dots and some lines. So let me first of all draw a couple of examples of graphs, just to get a picture going here. Okay, so I've just drawn three examples of graphs. This one you can see has three dots and three lines. This one has four dots and four lines. And this one happens to have five dots and five lines. And that is um, somewhat of a coincidence. So let me just tack on an extra line here so that you don't think we always have to have the same number of dots as lines. So when we talk about a graph, we mean something like this. Well, let's be a little bit more precise to say what we mean. A graph G is an ordered pair. G equals V comma E, where V is a finite set of elements and E is a set of two subsets of V. Sound confusing? It's not actually so confusing. What you just need to remember is that V is the set of vertices. So here in this graph, all of these green blobs are our vertices and all of these green lines are our edges. And we call our vertex set V and our edge set E. So let's think about this graph here in green. Let's say this is our graph G. And right now I've just drawn it as some dots and lines and I don't have any labeling on it. So it's gonna be a little bit hard to talk about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this vertex as a one, this one as a two, and this one as a three. What that means is that my vertex set in my example is V equal to the set one, two, and three. Those are the vertices. My edge set is called E and it consists of a set of two subsets. What are two subsets? Those are just pairs of elements of V. So what are my edges? Well, I see this edge from one to two. So I write down that edge one to two. And I also see an edge from two to three. And I also see an edge from three to one. And it doesn't matter if I write three one or one three. That's the same thing because we're not putting any direction on these edges. So let's just scroll down here a little bit and recap. So here's the definition of a graph. And we know it consists of a set of vertices and a set of, and a set of edges. The edges happen to be subsets themselves and we define them to be two subsets. By the way, there are generalizations where you can take more than two in a subset, but we're not gonna get into that now. That's called a hypergraph. So what we want to look at now is just the most simple case of graphs. And I really do mean simple. When I say simple graphs, I mean something very particular. I mean that they should not have loops, no loops, and no multiple edges. Well, what are loops and what are multiple edges? Let me show you with a little example. Just give ourselves a bit more space. I'm going to draw an example of a graph that is not simple. So here I'll give it a couple of vertices like this and then I'll start drawing some edges and I'll draw a couple of edges like that and then an edge like that and like that and another one like that. And now just so that I can talk about this all right, I'm gonna call this vertex one and two, and I don't need to go in a particular order, I'm gonna call this three and four. So this example right here is not simple. Not simple. Well, the reason why it's not simple is because it has, first of all, broken both of the properties that we asked for. It has a loop, and the loop is this thing right here. The, a loop is an edge that goes from a vertex back to the same vertex. And a multiple edge is an edge that goes between 
a vertex where there has already been an edge. So that's an example of a multiple edge. So this is our graph which is not simple. Since this is an introduction to graph theory, I'm going to stick just to simple graphs. So we can assume that there are no loops and there are no multiple edges unless I specify that we are looking at a particular exception for loops and multiple edges. Now there's one other thing that can happen. I mentioned up here that it doesn't matter if I write 1, 3 or 3, 1. If we do care about order, then we get something that's called a directed graph. Where each edge has a direction associated to it. I'll just draw a quick example of one. So here I maybe will label my vertices 1, 3, and 2. And now because I really care about the order, I'm going to specify that 1 goes to 3 and 2 also goes to 3. So when I write these types of brackets, I'm really meaning that 1 has an arrow which points towards 3 and again 2 has an arrow which points towards 3. So, as I mentioned, we're just going to consider simple, undirected graphs. And those are the nice, easy ones where you don't have to worry about any loops or multiple edges and you also don't have to worry about direction. So that's what we're going to take a look at in the next few videos. Lots of stuff about simple, undirected graphs. Now, last piece of terminology, we want to maybe talk about how many vertices a graph has and also how many edges it has. So we have special words for that. The size of the vertex set, that's the number of vertices, that's called the order of the graph. So that's the order of a graph, and the number of edges that it has is called the size of the graph. So if we just scroll back to the top where we had our first few examples of graph, I can show you their order and their size. This first graph, which I'll call G, has order 3 and size 3. This second graph, which we don't always have to use the letter G, we could call this graph here H, it has order 4 and size 4. And just to be different, let's call this graph over here in dark blue, capital F, and we'll say its order is 5, it has 5 vertices, and we counted the edges before, there are 6 of them, so it has size 6. So that's the basic idea of what a graph is, what its order is, what its size is, and the fact that we don't really worry about loops or multiple edges or directions, at least not for now. So hopefully you have a complete understanding of what is a graph now. See you next time!